Hello everyone, are you ready for another adventure? It's me, Woki, and I have my low, my thing lowered. I'm here with another thing in order video that's talking about the new Summer Servants, because they got revealed recently. We got Ibuki, Summer, and then also Eris, Summer, and we also have the top wikis here that you can see right here. Moving on right here. So that's going to be today's video. I hope you like it. If you do, you can leave a like, comment down below, tell me how you feel, if you plan to save them. I mostly play the NA version of the game, so I always just look at these out of curiosity. Um, and these two are looking extremely good. And this summer is looking very rough for me in two years. So let's start with Eris. I believe that's how you say her name. See here. First skill is de she has two quicks, two arts, one buster, four hits quick, three hits arts, two hits buster, five hits extra. Active skill, number one, Dead Spirit Peacekeeper, increases own arts performance for three turns, grants self-evasion for two attacks, three turns, 30%. Uh, pretty solid. A decent arts buff here, and then evasion for two attacks is, uh, it's about what Ku does, and it's a six turn cooldown, so it's not bad. Um, second skill, Boundary Towards Yomi C, inflicts curse with a thousand damage for three turns to all enemies. 500% chance to draw attention to all enemies to self by 300% for one turn. Grant self on defense activation buff for three turns. Reduces enemies defense by 10% for three turns when taking attack by them. Charges on MP gauge. At level 10 it's 30% MP gauge and it's a six turn cooldown as well. And then we have the third skill here which is Grim Reaper A. Increases own instant kill success rate for three turns, increases own critical damage for three turns, increases own damage against servant enemies for three turns, and we can see the percentages here are the death rate, which is 120% at level 10, crit damage is 35% at level 10, and versus servant's damage is 35%, cooldown 6, uh, it's okay. Um, I'm always going to be very critical of anything that has insta-death, but if you're getting 125% death rate, it's better than nothing, that's for sure. There are definitely certain units with death buffs that are good still, so I think because she's a more modern day one, they lean into it a little bit harder, but let's go. Passive skills, Avenger C increases on MP generation rate when taking attacks by 16%, 500% chance to reduce party's debuff resistance by 6% except yourself. Oblivion Correction C, which, uh, I don't know why I was doing it. Okay, is increasing own crit damage by 6%. Self Replenishment Magic EX charges on MP gauge by 4.2% every turn, which I think is the highest of this that we've had so far. 4.2%, 4% was the highest with Gene. So, yeah, it's pretty good. Pretty nice. Uh, Writing C, she only has. Oh, she has two quicks. All right, fair enough. 7% up in that. Independent action B, uh, critical damage by 8%. Divinity E, 100 damage. Extra, thanks, I guess, for that. Her third skill is against Lancers for her old class. Renewal Phantasm is a D rank. Arts hits four times, deals damage to one enemies. Deals 150% extra damage against enemies with the curse status and 80% chance to insta-kill them. Increase on Arts Performance for one turn, it's 900% at level 1 and 1,500% at level 5. And then the Arts Performance for one turn, it's okay. It's not, it actually, <laughs> it's not the greatest, it's only 10%, but sure. Uh, some units get a little bit more for a 4 star. Arts, she's perfectly okay, she's perfectly good I would say. Uh, Avenger's a weird class, because she's gonna be... It's a weird class in general I'd say. Um, I forget the reasons why. It's because it's really hard. For, well, no, she's single target, I think, here, so it's going to be fine. And her single target thing is specifically against insta-death. The one thing that's kind of a bummer is that most bosses are immune to insta-death. So even with 200% chance of insta-death, she's really not going to be doing much. <laughs> but she seems to be powerful enough that it doesn't really matter, so... Should be perfectly fine, and if you're going against a boss that isn't uh, insta death, or maybe there's a gimmick where you want to insta death kill them, she'd be perfect for that. So, perfectly solid. Uh, now let's go to the actual unit, who is <laughs> crazy broken. I don't know if I'm going to be able to use any of the arts here. Just to look at the Ibuki arts real quick, because they're crazy. This one's really good, then she goes to a kind of cheerleader thing, and then this one is just, I don't know how to describe that. And then, of course, that's stage four because that's what Rita does. 
I'll probably be using the front face of this one to talk about it. I can't use the full thing <laughs> for obvious reasons because I don't want to test. I was finally able to stop YouTube from removing my thumbnails. I don't need Ibuki to make it more removed now. Anyway, let's move on. Ah, no, I don't want to know what the top wikis are. One quick, two arts, two buster. Three hits quick, three hits arts, four hits buster, five hits extra. First skill, Midsummer Goddess B. Increases party attack for three turns, increases party critical damage for three turns, increases MP generation rate for summer mode servants, allies for three turns. So this is the ladies and the, the men. Um, at level 10, attack up is 20%, crit damage is 30%, and the summer mode servants NP is 30%. This includes her, so she is a berserker who gives herself 30% NP generation. Very nice. Second skill, summer cheerleader C, increases one ally's arts performance by three turns, increases their buster performance for three turns, reduces their skill cooldown by one. Uh, arts, 30%, 30%. And a reduced skill cooldown. <laughs> That's really good. Um, I'm pretty sure this can apply to her, but it just says an ally. Usually they say specifically if you can't do it to yourself, so you can give this to yourself too. Good job. Beach Apocalypse A+, charges on MP gauge, gains crit stars every turn for 3 turns, increases on crit star absorption for 3 turns, NP 50% at level 10, it's 10 stars and 500% absorption. With a cooldown of six, really good. Re she's insane in terms of uh, being able to get her NP back. And plus, if you're in a challenge quest such a scenario, you have the ability to get some crit stars. That's the one thing I don't like about, funny enough, uh, arts farming is that you never have enough crit stars for anything. So you can actually get at least some. It's not the most, but hey, it's something. And hopefully with that absorption, she'd actually be able to get some of them too. So, passive skills, Madness Enhancement E, increase on Buster Performance by 2%. Dragon Kind EX, increases on Buster Performance by 12%. If you were wondering, hey, low Madness Enhancement, that kind of sucks. But don't worry, she gets the Buster in another place. By 12%, reduces on damage taken by 200. Snake Goddess A, increases on damage by 250. Increases on buff removal resistance by 20%. Her append skill for the third is Alter Ego Anti. Alter Ego Ego Critical Attack Chance Resistance, huh. Okay. Interesting. You, I'm used to them not usually being something else that's different, but sure. Noble Phantasm is the Holy Spirits of Ibuki, the 8 channel Surging Waves, a 5 hit arts, removes all defensive buffs, activates first, very key on this. Deals damage to all enemies, reduces their critical attack chance by 20% for 3 turns. At MP level 1 it's 450%, at level 5 it's 750%. Uh, Deals extra damage against enemies of the earth attribute 150% up when it's um, charged at level 1. And then if you get it all the way to 500% it's 200%. And that is Ibuki. And if you're curious to see who specifically is on earth, it's a lot of units. A lot of units end up being on earth. And specifically some enemies, as you can see here, plenty of them are on Earth, so you'll find dudes to hit them with. Uh, so. Yeah, so this Ibuki is crazy strong. She's basically, I don't know, if, um, I don't like saying power crept, but she is basically power crept version of Musashi. Because if you look at Summer Musashi, who over here on NA is our main arts kind of dealio um, that we have over here. Uh, you can see here her specific thing where she increases her generation for three turns. 50% not bad. But then this stuff here is only one turn. And then you have some other stuff where it's like, oh, this is all good, but it doesn't really increase her attack in any way. She has... The 30%, which should be enough for a Berserker who is Arts with 5 hits on her NP. There should be plenty, especially if you're using Castoria. Um, it makes her extremely powerful. It makes her <laughs> basically a better version of Musashi. <laughs> they both have 450%. This one has a bonus against the Seal enemy's NP, but no, not the bonus against Earth, so she has a little bit of problem. Oh, they even have the critical attack chance, which is pretty funny. Um... 
I'm kind of curious to see where she'll go from here. From what I've seen from people doing early calculations, she's basically has more refund potential and power than uh, Space Ishtar and Summer Kama, which are the current kind of arts de facto to go to. Um, I can't really verify any of that. I've seen some stuff of her in action. I can't really speak to specifically how good she is versus them. Um, by two years time, I'll know for sure. But for right now, I can kind of just go like, if she's at least pulling at NP1 equal damage or something, or I, I, the specific calculation I saw, I did not see what it factored into, but I did see that on paper she was better um, at being able to get refund and in terms of pure power. To <laughs> Usually most units have one over the other. She has both. I also think she has a very interesting thing. Also, the one video I did see of her, she never used this third skill <laughs> under Double Castoria. <laughs> so I think um, this makes a case for Merlin, who is a little bit more power based. You could probably run her with Merlin. She even seems to have a little bit more extra things with regen and stuff. The one thing that is a negative is, of course, she's an AoE unit. So when are you really ever going to need all that extra power I guess I don't know I do know is that she seems extremely powerful I really like her I really like all her ascensions I think all of this is great this is Raita at peak Raita basically he's finally found his version of being able to combine Shuten with Raiko's body and then make it into a monster and he's basically created the perfect thing that he would ever want for this and he's basically created after so many attempts after so many summer units they finally gave him a 5 star, and I think it's 5 star quality, so I'm going to be very interested to see how she kind of goes from here. Obviously, I was already going to pull for her because it's Ibuki, and I really like Ibuki, and I already was planning on pulling for her this year on NA, so this just kind of makes it like, oh boy, it's going to make it really sad if I'm not actually able to get her in two years' time, but I'll see how it goes from there, but yeah crazy i really want to look into i'm really curious to see how scotty's going to be built because she's the last of these units to come out um it's going to be very interesting if anything it because it seems like so far all the summer units have been in some way crazy strong what with one of them being an arts um one of them being an art support and then Ibuki over here basically being the strongest arts at least for berserkers i'm willing to say for berserkers i'm still not 100 percent sure on even though i've seen the data just the idea of being on par with space ishtar and summer Kama, who summer Kama literally came out last year and people have been saying like oh yeah it's between summer Kama and space ishtar they're so good at arts looping and stuff like that for a unit to come out a year later and be like i think she's actually better than both of them is kind of nuts to me so I kind of don't believe it on face value, but I'll, again, I'll gladly wait and see and how it is. Even if she ends up being slightly not as consistent, I'll still see. I'll still think that she's worth having and super strong and super well built. So good job on them. Uh, so yeah, I will be back whenever they do with Scotty's stuff. But for now, I will just kind of patiently continue grinding NA going... Man, there's parts of me that I really wish I knew Japanese so I could actually play the Japanese. Well, actually, now that they've removed the ability to pay, I'm kind of glad that JP is not my main because I don't live in Japan, so I can't actually do that, and I can't be bothered to make a Japanese account for it, so... That's it everyone, that's the end of the video. Thank you very much for watching. As always, you can leave a like if you've enjoyed the video. You can comment down below, tell me how you specifically feel about them. I think it's very weird for me to be talking about a unit that's literally coming out because I'm always so used to a unit being like two years. By two years time, everyone knows how good a unit is. So I, there's not really much room for debate. For this one, I'm kind of curious to see what the debates will be around it. So uh, she's also immune to Pigify, Pigify based on the traits I see here. So yeah, comment down below, tell me how you feel. Subscribe to me if you want some more stuff featuring me, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace out!